Fight fans, what's going on? It's me, Coach Sess. Good morning, good morning. Hey, I, I got a question for you. Why does everybody hate the winners? I watched the Super Bowl last night, and I did not watch football all year long. That was the football game that I caught for, you know, this past football season. But what I can't understand is, is why do people hate the winners? You know, I, I once saw uh, Hoist Gracie um, at one of the gyms where I train, I said, Hoist, you know, who do you, who do you like in the UFC? And this was several years ago. So, and I, I think, I think at the time, uh, Damian Maya hadn't really fought for the championships yet, but he was coming on. I'm thinking, you know, he's going to say the jujitsu guy, you know, and Hoist just replies, I like the winners. <laughs> you know, That's it. <laughs> the champions, the winners, that's it. And why wouldn't you like the winners? You know, those are the guys that do it day in, day out. And whether you like them or not, you know, from a personal level, they are the people that are showing the results. I can understand if you contrast that to, you know, is this champion better than that champion? For that, I like to look at the total body of work, you know. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, put a champion who just picked up the belt you know, in the last month and say that he's the greatest of all time versus the guy who's been defending it for uh, four or five title shots in a row or four or five title defenses. Let me put it that way. But as far as the hate of the champions and the people who win consistently, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. I can understand having doubt. You say, uh, look at the fight coming up with um, Anthony Smith taking on John Jones, I, I I get it. You know, you can say, wow, well, this this guy's, you know, smaller, coming up to the uh, light heavyweight, but he's on, you know, three fight winning streak in that division, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can say a lot of things why he might not have a chance, but you got to like the kid. And, and you know, I, know I, I have only followed him maybe three or four fights of his career, not necessarily consecutively, but you know, he's okay. I just don't know if he can beat John Jones. It's okay to have that kind of thought, but I don't dislike him or hate him. Um, you know, I think he's got a chance. Everybody has a chance. But anyway, you know, just going back to the Super Bowl, why do we hate on the winners? Congratulations to the pa uh, Patriots. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Belichick fan, so, you know, I, I and I love coaches. You know, a lot of you guys are caught up into – the fighters themselves because that's where the performance comes from but i like the coaches because of the strategical mindset you know working behind the scenes to result in the outcome and so you know congratulations to the patriots and um you know i, I think the, the rams are going to be a team that you see again uh for whatever reason you're going to see them again because we saw them before anyway I want to holler at you about um, something. I was at a fight this weekend and something that stood out to me watching several of the fighters on the card. There were some things that um, I thought that each fighter could have done better. But to contrast, you know, some of the uh, more skilled fighters versus, uh, you know, the pros and the amateurs, in one of the fights, I saw a former teammate. I saw Anthony Wright uh, take on uh, uh, Chris Hurd in a fight. And one thing that Anthony kept doing over and over was using a front side uh, teep to the thigh and the hip area. And Anthony is a little bit shorter, so it helped him manage the distance. Uh, it was an excellent tactic. And then I contrast that to some of the fights that I saw earlier where there were problems in the fights where um, either the guy was, you know, they were just amateurs, but it didn't matter if they were taller or shorter. They had problems because they didn't really work off the front side. It's very important in in uh, sport martial arts that you learn to work off your, your lead side. And, and that's because that fight context is a lot different than a street fight. You work off your lead side. You know, you want to gauge your opponent. You don't just want to jump out and come with crosses and hooks 
and big uppercuts because they leave you open, you know, to, to a counter. So Anthony did a great job of moving in and out, uh, using his front side, waiting to pick his time for his takedown, his clinches. And once he was able to get to the inside, he was able to establish uh, some level of control inside of the clinches. Uh, everybody was waiting for his um, his his guillotine choke. He tried to set it up, but uh, Chris Hurd was savvy, uh, was aware of it, stayed away from it, did a great job in that regard. And I thought that the only thing Hurd was missing because he was a little bit taller. Um, I should say he was longer in the range. He didn't really manage it as well as he should have, but he would have managed it better had he used the jab. And that's because he was taller and a little bit longer. He just missed out on the opportunity to set up his power punch with a jab. And Justin, just as it has been with him in previous fights, um, fights that he's lost, if he doesn't set up that power with a jab and the guy is able to take him down or smother him or go longer rounds, he doesn't carry his power late. And I don't know if that's a physical thing. I don't think so from the studies that I've done, but I... Um, I think it has more to do with a, a, a mental application because you can't you can't throw completely convicted. You know, you can't throw that power punch complete, completely uh, with conviction if you're more concerned about being taken down. You know, there's a couple of ways to approach it. He could become an expert at defending against the takedown like a Chuck Liddell. But I would say that he would do himself uh complement his style more if he started using a real definitive uh, jab that keeps uh, his opponents at bay and away. And that's something that I'm encouraging all of you to learn to do is to use your front side attacks to set up uh, the opponent, to manage the range, to control the energy, and also um, to uh, manage the, the distance. Um, it's really about distance management. And Anthony did it very well. And I'll do some videos um, coming up uh, in the in the near future, specifically talking about um, the managing the distance and with certain tools. Hey, look, I am Coach Sess, and you've had words with a mad coach.